What's going down, Grind Schoolers? It's your boy, Rob, and we back in the shop today. So today, um, what we're gonna be doing is we are going to be building the paint booth. Um, we're not gonna be working on the car today. We're just pretty much prepping the uh, garage to get the car painted because the car is to the point where we're about to slap the polyester primer on there. Um, and then after the polyester's on the car and that portion of everything is all done, <clears throat> we'll go ahead and take the um, the doors off, do the door jams, paint them, um, do all the, the the jams for like the back the back part where all the tailgate and the rear bumper goes, and then also to the front clip and everything else. We're gonna paint all that to completion, um, and then after all the jams and everything are painted up to completion, the car has polyester and we done the body work. Um, or sanded everything down, did my guy coat, all that kind of stuff. We'll go ahead and paint the whole car. So uh, in order to do that, what we gotta do is we gotta prep the shop to uh, get painted. So um, I got my homie Dash bring me some, uh, or bring me a box fan, uh, bringing me the compressor, bringing me paint guns and stuff like that so I can get everything all squared away. Shout out to Dash, uh, check out Dash's garage. Um, if you get a chance, I definitely appreciate it because he's helping me make this possible. Um, and I also have, um, I'm gonna set up my ventilation and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about in a minute. I know this is a little bit of a different video other than working on the car, but like I said, this is what it's gonna take to get this thing painted. Um, so I appreciate y'all rocking with me, man. If y'all have not done so already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification. So you get a notification every single time we drop another video and go ahead and interact with me, man. I talk back, I get in the comments, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I reach back out to y'all in the DMs and everything like that. Go ahead and leave a comment down below, man. Let me know how I'm doing. Um, and just chop it with me, man. Um, I'm human just like everybody else. I talk back, I chop it with everybody. I try to get back to every single person that reaches out to me. Um, just because, like I said, I'm not one of these people that, you know what I'm saying, thinks that I'm mightier than thou and doesn't want to um, interact with the people that support them. You know what I'm saying? I, I thank each and every one of y'all for supporting me and rocking with me. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the video. I'll show y'all what I am going to do, how I'm gonna set everything up, and then we'll just get cracking on uh, getting everything all set up. So um, let's go ahead and get started. All right, y'all, so I have kind of like an oversized garage. So obviously it's a three car garage, as you can see, but there's this section right here that's like a good, like four, I'll say about four feet of space in between the two garages. So pretty much what we're gonna do is on the side of this track, um, this garage track, I'm going to put plastic. I'm gonna staple the plastic that I bought all the way along the top. I don't necessarily have to go that high, but I don't really have a good way to um, kind of like connect it, I should say, other than stapling it to the top. So I'm gonna staple plastic all the way to the top. So it gives me like this extra room, kind of like where the tailgate is. It gives me this extra room to kind of work with. And I've said this before, I can kind of pull the Elko in a little bit to keep it off of that wall over there. Um, so that when I start spraying, I can walk around the car free, freely and I don't have to worry about like um, the space limitation. Um, this window here is going to be my um, inlet for my air and stuff like that. I'm kind of trying to figure out how to um, how to like divert the air so the air is not coming directly into the side of the car on that side. Um, so I might try to make like a, a filter type system or something like that to direct or divert the air a different type of way. So pretty much what we're gonna do is also, we are going to um, put the plastic on that wall. I'm not gonna obviously go all the way to the top cause I don't really need to. I really actually don't need to, um, I guess, cover up that wall anyway, because uh, I don't really mind getting overspray over there just because it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be insulated and drywalled anyway one day. Um, but I'm gonna just do it for just the, the hell of it. Um, put the plastic all the way on the wall. And then we're gonna go across the top back here um, just to get all of this stuff covered up. And then we'll have the, 
pretty much the booth all set up. And then over here, I will have my, um, my outlet. So I'll lift up the garage when I'm painting and stuff like that. And I'll have my box fans just kind of, you know, blowing the, the air out of here so that, you know, we can get some of those fumes out of there. And then uh, we'll probably just uh, put the plastic across the top right here uh, when I'm actually ready to spray. I'm not gonna do it now because obviously I'm opening and closing the garage. So we'll just leave it like that for now. But what I do wanna do is I wanna get this part done, this part done, and then the back part done. And then um, obviously all of this stuff will be out of the way and then we can move in the parts that we need to move in. So first things first, like I said, we will knock down the El Camino um, with the polyester. So we'll go ahead and uh, throw the polyester on the car after the polyester is on the car and we can, you know, start guide coating and stuff like that. We'll do the guy coat, we'll sand it down again, and then after that, we'll take the doors off, we'll take the hood off, we'll take the front clip off, um, <clears throat> and then, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll go ahead and pull the car back into this side of the booth, and then we'll, we'll spray the gems, we'll do the gems, um, that means back here, that means in the door gems, and that means along the, the front um, two fenders, after we're done spraying the gems, we'll put the car back on that side and everything that I took off, the doors, um, the tailgate obviously is already off and then the hood will be in this part of the garage. We'll spray everything, we'll get it to completion. And then um, after that stuff is to com completion, we'll go ahead and set that off to the side, put the doors back on because the doors will have to be sprayed on the car. Like I'm not cutting, uh, shortcutting none of that, but the doors will go back on the car. Um, the hood will go back on the car, but the front clip, the tailgate and the bumpers, those will remain off the car until the car is fully painted. Um, so that's kind of the sequence of events of what we're trying to do um, or how we're going to go about this thing. I'm kind of limited on space. Um, a little bit because obviously I park all my cars in here and stuff like that. Um, something's gonna have to get parked outside for a little bit, but we are also going to uh, cover up the floor. So with each pass of the car going in and out, we'll probably recover up the floor. And the reason why I say that is because um, with the plastic, if I cover it up and you know do whatever I gotta do, um, and then I take the plastic up off the floor and just replace it with a new one, I can kind of keep the dust and all that good kind of stuff um, off of um, off of my paint because it'll be a new set of plastic and I won't have to worry about continuously trying to clean the floor and doing all that other extra stuff. So anyways, man, let's go ahead and jump into it, man. I'm gonna uh, throw this ladder up and then we'll go ahead and start stapling the plastic to the roof and the booth will just be sitting ready to go until um, we can get everything um, everything together and finalized in order to take care of everything. So let's go ahead and start stapling and then we'll uh, see how it turns out. Um, I'm, I might just throw the plastic over those tires and then just keep it moving. So we'll see how it comes out, but I'm gonna go ahead and get working and then um, I'll chop it with y'all after I'm done building the booth. Oh, <clears throat> I almost forgot to tell y'all what I actually got. So I got basically these nine by 12 foot um, drop cloths from Amazon. They're really, really thin and they came with 10 of them for like, I think like 20 bucks or something like that. So um, it wasn't a bad deal. I was going to use like a thicker plastic, but I really don't feel like I it, it's necessary to go with a thicker plastic. All I'm trying to do is prevent from overspray and stuff like that and then prevent from dirt getting into the booth and stuff like that. So pretty much that's all we're really doing is just trying to protect it. So this will work just fine. I also do want to have something a little bit lighter so that you know, it's not putting stress on the staples and, you know, ripping apart and falling apart. And like I said, I got 10 of them, so that should be plenty enough um, 
in order to do the job. And I don't know if you guys can tell, my ceilings in here are super duper high. I think they're like 14 feet, maybe. Maybe not that high. Maybe it's, maybe it's about like 12 to 13 feet, but we'll see when we try to lay the drop cloth uh, down to see how tall it really is. I kind of really think that it's a little taller than that, but um, we'll go ahead and see after you know we lay it out how how far down the drop cloth comes down and then also too if it doesn't come down to the floor obviously which i'm not thinking it's going to i'll just tape um tape the or use some painters tape and tape tape the bottom of the uh plastic with some more drop cloth and then we'll be able to complete it so let's go ahead and get started and then uh we'll go ahead and knock this out one more thing done and we can get closer and closer to completion. All right, so I got my tape out and I measured the car. The car is about 16 and a half feet long. Um, from the garage to where I got the tape measured, basically to the corner of this wall is 18 and a half. So pretty much if I tape off the back of this right here, um, from this corner of the wall all the way over. Um, that would give me about 18 and a half feet from the garage all the way to the back. And so to give me about a foot in the back um, to work with and a foot in the front to work with. Now, granted, I took the, or I'm gonna take the nose off. I took the back off for that reason so I don't have to go around the front in the back of the car, I could just do one side and do the other side, and then we'll paint the um, back and the front um, off of the car, like not together. Now, ideally, you would want to be able to walk around the whole entire car and stuff like that, but whatever this is, you know what I'm saying? This is a garage build. It's not, you know, professional paint shop, whatever. So anyways, um, and this is just how I have to, have to do it. So anyways, um, since I am not gonna have to walk around the front of the car or behind the car, um, I'm good to basically be able to um, like tape off just from the corner of that wall right there over. So that's where we're gonna start taping off and then we'll tape all the way to the front and stuff like that. What I am just concerned about is just being, being able to park the car over into that space. So from the corner of that wall to this wall is pretty much all I'm concerned about. Um, and then other than that, you know, we're good to go. So I think I'm gonna just do that and then see how it turns out, man, and go from there. So let me go ahead and start taping and um, go ahead and start nailing the, the tape down. And I'm not super concerned about how high it is because I'm not gonna get overspray way up there or nothing like that. The only reason why, like I said, I'm going and stapling it to the roof is because that's the only place for me to be able to attach anything in the middle section right here. So let's go ahead and jump into it, man. We are gonna go ahead and knock this booth out and it'll just sit like that until I'm ready to spray the car, which will be really, really soon with the polyester. And then we still gotta just order more stuff to get in to start painting everything else. But let's go ahead and jump into it and get this project done. So there you have it. Garage built a uh, paint booth. Um, so uh, what we're going to do, and I, I was right, the um, the garage height is about 13 feet. There's like a, another foot of space between these uh, these uh, tarps or whatever. There's about a foot of space to the ground. So pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some more and I'm gonna tape those 
across the bottom and then across the uh, floor as well when I actually officially start to paint it. So right before I put the car in, I'll tape it down um, across the bottom and then we'll uh, go ahead and cover up the whole entire floor so we can encapsulate all this dust. And before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and wash this down, sweep it out, get all this off because the uh, plastic actually does like um, gravitate towards like the dust or collect the dust and stuff like that. Um, this section right here, I'm gonna leave open for a little bit. Just for now, I'll cut a little piece and um, do all the rest of that. I'm definitely going to cover up my garage um, opener thing with like some tape or something like that. Um, and then, let's see, let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much, man, about it. Just, just so that I don't get like no overspray on anything. The dust isn't really flying around. Um, like I said, I wanna leave this open uh, because I'm gonna put like the box fan in there with the filter and then I'm gonna make like my filtration system somehow like go around and not like spraying like directly. Um, I want it to like kind of like flow. So we'll make it somehow uh, work. But anyways, and then I didn't go all the way up to the ceiling uh, right here either, just because like I said, I don't really care about getting overspray all the way up there. Um, which it shouldn't really get overspray way up there because I'm not aiming the gun up there. It's just gonna be like like car height. So anyways, man, um, yeah, like we'll clear all this stuff out when we're ready to actually paint the car, move everything around. But for the most part, that's it, man. Um, I'm definitely going to tape all the seams. Um, I'm gonna tape all the seams so that we can get, uh, so that these things don't like, open up and I accidentally get overspray out of the out of the actual um out of the actual booth because once I start spraying with that gun all of that stuff's gonna blow really 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 good so uh we'll probably blow everything off with uh some air compressed air before we start spraying and then we'll we'll make it do what it do man but uh, yeah for the most part um it looks pretty decent uh, I'll probably put that uh, core up and over that one. Um, right now it's just at the bottom because that's how I had it, but eventually I'll just, you know, like I said, put it up and over, get like a longer extension cord and go up and over, and then that will take care of that. Like I said, all this other stuff will be moved out the way and we'll be good to go, man. And that's my garage built paint booth is what I got. It's what we working with, so hey, don't flame me too much um, in the comments or nothing like that for what I had to do, but this is what it looks like, man. You know, and like I said, we'll have our ventilation system all good to go, and then we'll put the box fans at the bottom there with the uh, filters and stuff to blow all of the uh, particles and stuff out of there, but yeah, man, I think it turned out pretty good, so. Yeah, next steps, get this car in some paint. All right, guys, schoolers, that's gonna do it for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed it, man. Uh, it wasn't too, nothing too crazy. I just pretty much built the paint booth and put the, uh, or pretty much put all the plastic up and stuff like that, just so that we're ready to put the car into polyester and then start painting and do all the stuff that we gotta do to make this car look nice. Um, it's a garage built setup. So it's not like perfect. It's not 100% ventilated and all that kind of stuff like you would see in like a professional shop. Um, it's just what I what I have to do to get my car in some paint. Um, but yeah, man, it should turn out pretty good, pretty decent. Any imperfections that we have will um, obviously wet sand out and do all that other stuff. We're gonna go through all the steps necessary in order to make this thing work um, pretty much perfect. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> yeah, but we're trying to keep as much dust out of the shop as possible. And that's the reason why I put up all the plastic and stuff. And we're also trying to prevent from overspray everywhere, even though this garage will be painted and, um, that other side of the wall will be drywall and insulated and all that kind of stuff. I still want to prevent from making a, a big mess. So that's the reason why I did that. And obviously, you know, have some type of professionalism to it too. So yeah, man, that's what we're going to do, man. Um, 
hopefully everything turns out pretty good. Uh, like I said, it, it didn't really, um, it, it, it's a garage, it's a garage setup. You know what I mean? This is a garage built car. Everything has been done either in a parking lot, uh, in a parking lot, in the driveway or in the garage. Um, and we're going to continue with that thing, man. Even in front, even down to the paint, it's going to be garage built. So, um, yeah, man, that's going to do it. Like I said, for this video, I hope y'all enjoyed it because you know, like we, we really making some huge progress and I'm super geek because with the Elko, um, the Elko especially, I've built everything on this car. Everything on this car I've done myself. Me and my dad have done my, ourselves from the motor to the transmission, um, to the wiring, to everything that, that you see on this car, I've done myself. Like I said, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm a, I'm a, not a professional mechanic or nothing like that, but I know what I'm doing when it comes to my, my cars, you know what I mean? And I take pride in that. Like it's not something that's getting sent off to the shop. This shop does this, that shop does this. I do it myself. So, you know what I'm saying? Like everything that you see is really pretty much trial and error, not being afraid to try something on my car. Um, and that's that is what it is and when this thing gets an ls motor everything's going to be done myself like i'm not sending this car out to the shop getting it done and all that kind of stuff and then pulling up to the car shows with a car that somebody else built like nah we're not doing that um with the impala um i sent it off to the paint shop because i didn't think that i was going to have enough time to paint the Impala. And I wanted somebody else to do it. At first it started out with me doing it myself. Um, and I learned a lot. I learned a lot from talking to uh, my painter and also another painter and other painters telling me like, yo, you didn't do this right. You need to do it this way, blah, 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 blah. So I'm taking that experience and I'm applying it to the El Camino. Um, like I said, with the Impala, I didn't think that I was gonna be able to get that done. I wasn't gonna be able to paint the Impala and paint the Elko. I wasn't gonna be able to do both of them at the same time. So um, one had to get done by somebody else and it was the Impala because it's a lot more real estate. It's a lot bigger of a car. It's four doors instead of two to take off and whatever, do whatever you gotta do to change the color. And if I was doing the Impala myself, I probably wouldn't change the color. It would be go back DCM and we will call it a day. But um, yeah, like I said, the Impala, um, when it comes back, uh, that would be the only thing that I, I, I haven't done myself on that car. Excuse me. Also to the Camaro. I bought the Camaro with the supercharger and all that kind of stuff on it um, because it was a hell of a deal and I couldn't pass that up. Uh, but other than that, man, like I said, I prefer to build everything myself just because I know that I'm doing the work correctly. If I break it, I'll fix it. If something happens, then we'll correct it. Um, when you take it to a shop, man, you, you see a bunch of horror stories with people doing cars just terrible. Like you pay all this money and somebody done wired your car wrong. So you're in jeopardy of the car catching on fire. Or, you know, you take your car to the shop and they didn't put your wheels on right and you, you're in jeopardy of a wheel falling off. Or, you know, somebody didn't, um take the time to put in the braking oil to break in the motor or something like that. If you've built, you've done a whole build on the motor and your motor blows up and you spent $10,000 on a motor and it blew up because somebody didn't know what they're doing or you spent $10,000 on a paint job and you know, somebody slapped a whole bunch of Bondo on it just to cover up a little tiny dent instead of taking the time to pull the dent out. They just slapped Bondo on it. There's so many things that these janky mechanics do on these cars, man, that y'all shouldn't be paying for it. You shouldn't be paying for somebody to mess up your car even more than what it, what it went in their ass. You feel me? So, you know, and it definitely shouldn't be sitting at a shop for 10 months to do one little simple little thing. Um, I mean, you know, like to each his own, everybody has their own preference on what they want to do with their car. And, you know, some people are not mechanically inclined. I get it. Some people have a big bag and they don't have the time. I get it. 
whatever it is, you know what I'm saying? Do you, you know what I mean? But like I said, I just prefer to put my hands on my car. And like I've said it before, I had a box back in the day and I had somebody working on it and they did a shitty job um, when they, they put, I paid for a lift. They just went to the auto parts store and put spacers in my springs. You know what I mean? Like just stuff like that, man. It's just, it's kind of, it's kind of frustrating because it's like, yo, I paid you to lift my car, not just go get the $10 spacers at the auto parts store, charge me whatever I paid to, to lift the car. And then, you know what I'm saying? Like, tell me that the car is lifted. Like, come on, bro. Like, what kind of shit is that? You know what I mean? But anyways, man, like, I'm gonna stop ranting. I just kind of went on a tangent there because I was just thinking about, you know, like everything that I've done to this El Camino, just looking at it um, and just thinking about where it was to where it is now. And I know it's been a minute since I've had this car and I really started working on it like I've been working on it. Um, it makes me proud to say, yo, I built that. You know what I'm saying? That's that's my baby right there. You know what I'm saying? Like, ain't nobody touch it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can honestly say there has not been one person that has touched this El Camino except for the exhaust shop. That's it. Except for the exhaust shop. And that's it. That's it. Nobody else has put laid a finger on his car. So, you know what I'm saying? Like like I said, I say all that to say, you know what I'm saying? I'm super proud of where I've come. And this is a garage built car. It's not going to be a show car. It's not going to be perfect. It's not built to the level of, you know, perfection, like a $100,000 build, nothing like that. Some, or to the level of a professional fabricator or a professional mechanic or whatever it is, man. But I will say that I am proud to have built this car to where it is now. And even though it's not to completion, just looking at the dashboard um, and looking at the body work that I've completed and looking at you know the motor and everything that I've done and everything that I've touched on this car um, and created on this car from learning how to do the fiberglassing myself, learning how to do the body work correctly, learning how to, you know, build the motor and installing the motor and transmission. My dad and I hand built this motor in his car. And as you guys can see, or as you guys hear in the videos, this thing sounds mean. This thing burns the tires like it's nothing. My dad and I hand built this motor, yo. Like I said, man, um, I said all that to say that I'm just proud of where this car has come and where we're at today with the car. And I said all that to say, this is a garage built car. This is not a show car. And for me to, to build the booth like it is now and to see where this car is gonna go, it's super exciting, y'all. So anyways, man, um, without further ado, I'm gonna conclude this video. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button and hit that bell notification so you get a notification every single time we drop another video. I hope y'all enjoyed the video like always. If it's not too hard to ask, go ahead and share it with a friend. We are growing uh, a lot faster than we were before and I'm super thankful and appreciative for every single one of y'all for rocking with me and sticking with the channel and just interacting with me, man, and staying around trying to see what's gonna happen next. And I know y'all are still waiting on the Impala. We are all still waiting on the Impala. I talked to my panel last week. The car should be home, hopefully by the end of the month. Um, I'm crossing my fingers for that because I told him, I know he's gonna spend time with his family um, over the holidays and stuff like that. So I'm trying to get the car back before he does that because if not, then we're talking about next year and then we fall into the car being gone for a whole year. And I really don't want to deal with all that, you know? And if, if that's the case, I may just go pick up the car, bring it home and finish it myself. Um, so I don't want that to happen because, you know, I know that he's a dope painter and he can get it done and it, everything will be all solid and he's a real good dude. Um, but I need my car, I need my car, man. I need my car. But anyways, man, um, like I said, I'm gonna conclude this video. Always remember, work hard so you can live free.